Real gunfights are over in seconds, so you gotta be ready right now to fight it. Hi everyone, this is John with today's active self-protection lesson out of Chicago, Illinois. Shows us here what looks to me to be an attempted carjacking that goes very, very badly for the carjacker. Teaches us some important lessons about keeping your tools on you and being ready with them, about situational awareness, and about using cover and concealment effectively. So this is in Chicago. These guys are just getting gas. And I do want to note, go read the news story that is listed on my website. Links in the description. And what you'll see from the police report on this is this is not a robbery. This is not gang related. This is not drug related, but it is probably ego related. These guys kind of looked at each other and kind of mean mugged each other a little bit. And the guy in the orange here went back to his car and got a gun. Now he's showing it to these guys and going, yo man, I got a gun and you want to talk. And he wants to talk with this guy and have an ego fight. But that guy's got a gun as well. Now they start shooting and the guy in the orange, Morales, shoots first but instead of getting hit he didn't he was hit with the gunfire from the other guy then they get in the car and they are gonna bag out of there and they're gonna hit the reverse and get out of there and thankfully they weren't hurt but that perp did die at the scene police did investigate this whole thing and no charges were filed against him he was declared justified let's go back and learn some lessons out of this one as always there's eight lessons on our website there's links to more information all that stuff there and there's a link in the description to get you there now first of all you can see that our perp here is getting his gun out from uh, behind him and our victim is sees him so he gets his door open here so that he's not stuck in his car so this is now an ego contest so you see him he's not shooting he's got his gun out and in his hand he's using it as an intimidation tool and so our defender there has got his car door open so that he has some space. Remember, your car, if it's not moving, is a coffin. You either use it or get away from it. Now, he's trying to get in there and jaw with this guy. So you see the guy finally goes in his glove box and gets his gun. And now he's got to, he decides he's going to get out of his car. And you see how long it takes him and how hard it is for him to get out of the car and get his gun on target. This is why we talk about in vehicle close quarters combat that you've got to be able to shoot through the windows. Would have been hard, of course, with his buddy sitting right there. But to be able to get shots on him through the window would have been helpful. Now, he did something very well here, the defender did. He used the car door and that back quarter panel. Now, of course, we know from shooting through cars a whole lot that cars are great concealment but not cover. But what we see in real gunfights is that concealment works as well as cover a lot of times because bad guys won't shoot through it. So instead, he's, he's trying to find him. Our defender actually puts at least one. It says he was shot multiple times in the news story, but I can't tell exactly when that is. But he shoots him at least once here. And so the fibs factor starts. You remember what the fibs factor is, right? Fudge, I've been shot. So as soon as he puts shots in the guy, the guy runs off. Now, he's not out of the fight necessarily, but he gets out of the danger zone. He gets away from where he will hurt us. Because he's been shot, he's thinking about something else rather than hurting us. And so then our defender gets back in the car and gets the car started. And I love the fact that he gets out of the danger zone. Now I know sometimes people give me a hard time about this, but I'm gonna say it again. They decide to get out of there and get to safety. It's perfectly okay for you to leave the scene for your own safety as long as you can articulate that. So what I recommend is if you have to exfil, you got to get out of the uh, out of the place where the the encounter happened. Get on the phone with 911 as soon as you can. Let them know what happened. Let them know you'll come back to the scene of the crime with police to protect you there. And if you do that, it's perfectly acceptable from a moral and a legal standpoint. This defender did a fine job protecting himself very, very well. Maybe a few tactical things, but in an overall sense, great attitude, enough skill, good plan. He covered his asp.